Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Uh, it's been a few days. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's been a few days since my last video. I've been a little busy with real life stuff, which is rather inconvenient. But uh, looking forward to get back at some Factorio here today. Uh, what I'd like to do next is set up a green circuit factory. So um, as we saw here, there is a, well, there's a certain ratio that we need to reach between the copper wire and the green circuit assemblers. Um, because we need three copper wires for every circuit and, um, and they produce at the same time with the same cycle time, but normally you only get two copper wires at a time. So here we solved that by just using a slower assembly machine for the green circuit itself. And that results in having the ideal ratio between these two machines. Um, so that's one way that we could tackle it. The other way that we could do it is, um, since we can't get three out of these, um, we can set it up so that we have three copper wire machines feeding two green circuit assembly machines. So with the three to two ratio, every production cycle, you'll get six copper wires and two green circuits. Um, and then we can use the faster assembly machines for that. You could also just set up a big line like this. Um, and there's a third option as well, which is just to use two blue assemblers and have them feed one into the other. Um, they won't be they won't be perfectly balanced, but later on we can add productivity modules to the machine that makes the green circuits. Um, you'll see that these machines, well not that one, but these machines have two slots for modules. So you can add two production module ones. That'll give you a productivity boost, meaning every once in a while you'll get a free green circuit out of it but it'll also slow down the machine and it'll get not exact, but it'll get pretty close to the ideal ratio if you wanted to do it that way. Um, any of those three methods I think is perfectly acceptable, but I think probably the more common is the three into two method. And that's what I'll showcase in this, in this tutorial. Uh, before we do that, let's get some more research going. Um, I'm just going to start doing these in the order that they appear. I'm not really terribly concerned about which one gets done first. Uh, actually, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm getting a little weary of having to do my research one at a time and not having the queue. Since I didn't enable it when I set up the game, um, I'll show you a way that you can enable the research queue via the console. So to get to the console, you just press the, well, on my keyboard, it's the key to the left of the one key, which is like the tilde key or the one with the backwards apostrophe. Um, and then you type the following slash C. Oh no, I'm sorry. Slash C game dot player dot force dot research underscore Q underscore enabled equals true. Okay. And then you'll get a warning that says using console commands will disable achievements. Repeat the command to proceed. Now, in my case, I've already unlocked all of the achievements, so I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And you can just press the up arrow key to repeat the last command. If you're after achievements, you might not want to do that. Um, but I think I've also read somewhere that this particular command does not disable achievements. So I'm not real sure about that. But anyway, if you're concerned about achievements, you might not want to do that. All right, so now I've got the queue available. Um, and to use the queue, 
Uh, you shift left click on the research in the order that you want to do it. And you can queue up to, what is that, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Why seven? I don't know. Seems like an odd number. Um, stronger explosives is good. That increases grenade damage. I haven't made any grenades yet, but you'll see that um, when you have grenades, you have to use two grenades to destroy trees because um, one grenade doesn't do enough damage. But after you research two levels of stronger explosives, then the grenades can one-shot trees, which uh, makes it real easy to clear lots of trees very quickly. Okay, back to circuits. So let's leave um, let's leave six tiles a room. All right, and I'm just using these assemblers as a um, as a measuring stick since they're three by three tiles each. Okay and then I'll set my first belt there. Now the outer belt is going to be copper plate. Whoops. So let's put a splitter there. We'll feed that over. Then the underground belts. And then we'll feed that up. Um, and then we'll grab some of these circuit machines. And let's put in six of them to begin with. Okay, and these will all be copper cable. Let me put them all right next to one another. All right, now the tricky part is setting up the other two. So what I do is uh, line up on the bottom one and then go up one tile and over one tile. Okay, and then line up on the top one the top of the three and go down one tile and up one tile and that'll put you in the right position and those are both going to be green circuits and again I'm copying the recipe by shift right click shift left click okay and now from there it's pretty simple we just put some fast inserters uh, this works best with blue inserters by the way um, <clears throat> and then on the output this machine will go directly there. So this machine is feeding uh, exclusively into this one. So this will get two wires every cycle. This machine is feeding one wire each into these two machines. And then the one on the end is feeding one wire into that machine. Now initially, those are going to be a little bit too slow. Um, and the reason is because they can only pick up one at a time and they're just a little bit too slow to make it. So you could, um, to keep it at the right speed, what we can do is put an additional yellow inserter on each of those. Um, later on, we'll get an upgrade to the inserters, which will increase the stack size and it'll allow the inserters to pick up two or even up to three at a time. Um, and then at that point, we wouldn't need this second inserter, but one blue and one yellow uh, should be fast enough to move two at a time into, into that machine. Okay, so let's try it out. We'll power these up. Um, yeah, and I'll put that one right there. Okay. So, next we need iron to feed these guys. So what I'm going to do is... Well, there's a few different ways that we can feed the circuits coming out. As well as feed the iron in. I think what I'm going to do on this playthrough is this will be our belt for the green circuits. And then I'll have a belt here for the iron. And then we'll use long inserters to bring in the iron plate from the far belt. 
and then we'll use blue inserters to put out the green circuits. Okay. So now I just need to give it some iron plate. And that's going to go right there. Okay, we'll come up, leave room for more copper plates, and then feed those up there. And then we can stick a light there in the middle. Okay, and now we got green circuits. We can check to make sure it's running at full speed, which it's just barely doing so. You can see it waiting just a fraction of a second for those iron plates to come in. Um, again, once we once we upgrade the inserters, then that'll work out better. Okay. Now the other thing that we can do so that we can... Um, no, that won't work, will it? Okay, so over here we're going to repeat the pattern. We've got two tiles here. Uh, let's see. No. Tell you what. Let's make a minor adjustment here. Let's leave one tile between each set of three. Let's put that there. Will that matter? There we go. I'll still need one there. Uh, this, I hope this will make sense in a minute. Okay, and then we set this up like before. I did that because what I would like to do is I would like to load both sides of this belt. So what I'm going to do here is put another set of outputs off to the side and then this will side load so that we can load both sides of these blue belts. Or I'm sorry, both sides of these yellow belts. Or just of the belts. <laughs> we don't have to be so precise. Okay, and we'll throw in another light. Okay, and you'll see when a machine has more than one inserter on the output, it'll just it'll just alternate between one and the other, as you can see there. There is one exception to that, but I won't go into that right now. Okay. Oh, that's facing the wrong way, isn't it? There we go. So that's one full belt of green circuits. Now let's make another full belt of green circuits on the other side. Well, I don't know if this is going to be completely full, but we'll get there. One, two, three. And then we're just going to basically mirror the same thing on this side. And then skip a space. No, I didn't line that up right. There we go. Copy, paste. Copy, paste. And then we'll need another belt of copper. start crafting some more of those blue inserters. Alright, more copper.
copper. Let's bring the iron down as well. these. Here, let's fix this. Okay, we'll do reds on the inside. And blues on the outside. Okay. Just kind of power this up like that, like that. Let's move that to be more repeatable. Okay, and then one there, one there, a light there, and a light there. There we go. And now we have two belts of green circuits which I'm going to bring down onto the bus. This is not correct. These are going to be four iron lines. Uh, this actually should be cutting off here. All right, and then whenever you uh, add to your bus, just extend your belts accordingly. Pick this up. So the next group of four belts is going to be here. And so I'm going to run both belts of these green circuits down there. As soon as I craft more undergrounds. Let's grab some gears. Uh, I'm doing okay on belts. But grab more be gears. I'll grab more power poles. some of those too. Um, all right, so here I'm going to have to deviate from the, the typical spacing a little bit because that inserter is in the way. Actually, that one should go to the far side. This one will come down here. Okay, so let's check this and do a little bit of math. We get one circuit every half a second, or two circuits every second, um, times 0.75 which is one and a half, two per second, one and a half per second. Okay, we get one and a half per second per circuit machine. Uh, we know that we can carry 15 on a yellow belt. So 10 of these or five groups of three will completely fill a yellow belt. Okay. So we could build that up now, or we could wait until later on to build up the capacity. Um, but we know that five groups, five of these groups on each side will give us two completely full yellow belts of circuits. I'm not gonna do that yet because I don't really even have enough copper to do it. Um, or iron. And I won't have either until I have more resource patches. So there's not much point in expanding green circuits right now either. Okay, let's take a look up here. We can see that one of my turrets has been busy. 
It's killed quite a few biters, as evidenced by their corpses. Um, if we hover over it, we can see we got 24 kills on it, and it's taken a little bit of damage. So while we're here, let's make a few repair packs, and we'll just repair that by just left-clicking with the repair pack. One thing I like doing on my second toolbar is I like putting in ammo, repair packs, and turrets. And then I can switch bars. So to make the second one active, I press X. And that way it's easy for me to come someplace, throw down a turret, load it with ammo, do repair, and so on. Now since the biters all seem to be going for this turret, let's, uh, let's remove that one. And let's put another turret closer. Yeah, this one's been making some kills too, but it seems they're coming towards this one and then the other ones are helping in the fight, right? So we'll bring them a little bit closer and that way this will be in range of all three turrets and they'll be, they'll be able to kill faster. Killing faster is usually your best defense in this game, I found. Um, you know, more walls and static defenses like that are usually not as effective as just having more firepower. Okay, so now we can load up our queue again. Let's do explosives, batteries, advanced electronics. Let's do the next two ammo upgrades. Uh, I can't do stronger explosives yet because that requires military science packs, which we don't yet have. Um, so then we'll do research speed and solar energy. And that reminds me that I should have access to heavy armor now. So let's craft one unit of heavy armor. And we also have a shotgun available, um, which requires some wood. So here, we'll take our heavy armor and replace our light armor with the heavy. That just gives us, you know, more resistance to stuff. Let's gather some wood and we can make a shotgun. Shotguns are pretty good for destroying biter nests. Okay, then so we'll craft one shotgun and then I'll craft a handful of shells. And we can also start making better ammunition. Um, but I'll hold off on that just a little bit until we start making military science. Because um, that better ammunition is actually an ingredient of the military science packs, as are grenades. So when we, when we set up for military science, we'll set it up so that we make extra, extra magazines and extra grenades for our personal use as well. Okay, now you can see the shotgun is in my second weapon slot and the ammo goes there automatically. And then you can press tab to switch between your weapons. Now when biters are near, you can press the space bar to fire and it'll auto aim and fire. So I'm holding down my space bar right now, but it's not shooting anything because there's nothing in range. Um, but you can force it to fire by pressing the C key. If you hover over something that's shootable, it won't just shoot into thin air. Um, where did that pistol go? Didn't I leave the pistol by the lake? Ah, here it is. I'm going to go pick it up. So I'll show you where this can come in handy sometimes. All right. So now I've got a pistol and I have light armor and I'm never going to use them again. So one way you can get rid of stuff is to uh, put it in a chest. Oh. We'll throw the pistol in there and then just fire at it. That destroys the chest and everything in it. So that's how I typically just get rid of junk that I know I'm never going to use again. Okay. So 
Um, we're doing fine on iron. We're doing fine on copper. Again, I could add, I could add more lines, but it's not really going to help me very much. I've got, I don't even have enough mining drills on copper to fill a whole belt. I probably do on iron. We could set up another iron line, I think, with the rest of this episode. So why don't we do that? I'm going to remove these drills that are mined out. I'm getting a little concerned. I, I think we really need to get ready to send out some trains pretty quickly. Alright, and if I put a drill here, I'm going to get some combination of coal and iron. Alright, so I'll put one there and I'll put one there. Alright, I'll put a splitter there. We'll set the output priority for this side and tell it to filter iron ore. And then the copper we can send up there. And then we can pick this up since that's not needed anymore. Okay, yeah, so let's set up another um, another iron smelting line. Um, we're going to need it anyway. I think what I'll do is I'll just set up half of the line using our steel furnaces. Okay, so in this case, we only need 12 per side. There we go. Um, how do these do on pollution? Pollution, four per minute. These are pollution, two a minute. Okay, so I guess you get the same amount of pollution either way. Not surprising. copy the priority settings the same way we copy recipes shift right click shift left click and then here actually what I'm going to do for the iron here, let's get this power pull out of the way for the iron I'm going to split off of the steel line but I'll prioritize the steel Okay, so that way iron ore, it'll go here for steel, but if we're not using all the ore, then the overflow will come to this second iron line. And I think that'll be good for now. Okay, there's our output belt. Let's put in the power poles. And finally, the inserters. Okay. And ironically, haha. <laughs> Um, this will output as much as this big line. But again, we're going to keep the length because when we update to red belts and have more iron coming in by train, we'll be able to even double this. Okay, and then we need to feed this line of iron up here. 
typically I would run it next to this one, but since I've got this other ad hoc factory in the way, I'll just come over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll feed this into the first belt and then I'll have this be the second belt. Okay, so now we've got two out of four belts of iron. Uh-oh, we're getting an attack. Okay, now they destroyed some stuff. Not too much, fortunately. All right, and here we have a damaged belt. So let's repair that. And then because that just happened, it looks like some of the biters came around the other side of this pond here. Um, let's put a couple of turrets out here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll set them up so that one turret is within the range of the other turret and that way they can help each other out. Okay. Um, and as a matter of fact, with the time we have left in this episode, I'm going to go up and I'm going to take out that base so that these attacks don't continue for too long. All right, I need some iron plate. Grab that out of my buffer here. And I'll make a couple handfuls of turrets. Let's get some more ammo. I'm going to replace those with blue inserters so they get made faster. Okay. All right, uh, so I'm, while I'm waiting for these turrets, what I wanted to show you is now I have two belts, okay? Um, so what I normally like to do when I have two belts, for example, I'm, I'm feeding this area. So what I'll do is I'll set the output priority left and I'll put another split it, splitter there and I'll do the same thing. So that way when I have multiple belts, it's gonna shift all of that belt production as far left as possible to feed that. And then I'll do the same thing in these other positions. Okay, and again, just copying that left side priority. And that way, even though these are all taking off of the top belt, the second belt will now be refilling the top belt as stuff gets pulled out. And that way we can take advantage of having more than a single belt of input. All right, let me grab some of these circuits and hopefully you'll see that in action as we start making some more green circuits. Well, I guess it's hard to see because these belts are so full and we're not using the iron that fast. Here. Um, I think I'm missing something up here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's not how this works. Okay, and these inserters are pretty badly damaged. So let's repair those. There we go. And I've got some extra iron ore here I want to get rid of, and then we'll go up and take out that biter nest. Okay, so it's yeah, pretty much due north of us. Now, with default settings, um, biters expand. So they, they will go to areas, they'll go to new areas with a group of, of biters and they will establish new nests. In fact, it looks like they've done so right here, right? That we couldn't see that before because the last time the radar scanned this place, that thing was not there and now it is there. I'm gonna turn off the pollution cloud. I find it to be kind of distracting. Okay, so here's, here's how I approach this. I'm going to switch my hotbar. 
I'm going to start by setting up a couple of turrets. Okay, and then I creep forward, staying within range of the first two, and put down two more. And then you come back and pick up the first two. Could be three, you know, you'll, you'll have to get a feel for how much firepower you need. We need to take out that worm. Since it's long range, so I just use my own gun for that. I'm going to switch to my shotgun. Shoot this thing a dozen times or so. There. All cleaned up. Now look at this. There's a big wave of these guys. I don't want them to go to my base. Holy cow, that's a lot of biters. So I'm going to try to get their attention. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and I'm going to run back towards my turrets. <laughs> and hope I got enough firepower here. Let's put down a couple more. Load them with ammo. And then just run around while my turrets take them out. Whew. Okay. And then I'll repair. And then pick them up. Now one thing you could do to help prevent them from coming back and spreading to this area again is you could just place a turret here. And give it a little bit of ammo. Jeez. Uh, I'm going to take half of that out again. We'll give it 50 rounds. Uh-oh. I'm getting attacked someplace where I'm not protected. Okay, I gotta go deal with that. Isn't this fun? <laughs> when I'm not doing a tutorial, I often play with no biters at all because I don't find it fun. Oh, that belt's going the other way. That's not going to help me. Oh yeah, they just destroyed a bunch of my mining drills. Here's another one. Okay. Let's clean this up. turrets here. There. Let's go see if we have more ammo, because I don't have enough now to take out that nest up there. Okay, and I'll replace that with a faster machine as well. Okay. So, this is how I do it early game. I usually just wait until an attack comes in. And then I'll put up defenses in that area. And then, after a while, those couple of turrets are not going to be enough anymore. And then I'll need to beef it up. And eventually, it'll get to the point where we have to build some walls. And uh, you get the idea. And later on, we'll get access to laser turrets, which make things a bit easier because they don't need ammunition. They just need power. Okay, we got three worms up here. So we're going to have to try to dodge a little bit so we don't get hit. And then at the same time, I try to make sure that I'm covered by a turret. Okay. 
I'm not particularly good at this part of the game. You can see I almost died. If you die, it's not a big deal. You can you can go and retrieve your body. <clears throat> um, but for your health, maybe I'll just maybe I'll come up here and get some more iron from there, and just run it down with belts. It's not that far away. All right. Now, one thing you can do is you can look for a fish in the water, and if you can reach it. You can pick them up. And fish are kind of like health potions. Let's grab a few more. I don't know if it works anymore, but I, <laughs> I've seen before where people would put long inserters next to the shore and when fish would swim close enough, they would pick the fish out of the water and put them in a box. I don't know if that works anymore, though. Because I tried to do it once, and I never caught anything. Okay. Uh, where's my fish? Ah, here we go. So I'll throw fish there as well. And then the way you use the fish is you just pick it up. Oh. And click on yourself and if your if your health is not at full it'll restore some of your health okay well i think that's going to do it for today i hope you enjoyed this episode found it useful if you have any questions let me know in the comments i think in the next episode um we'll set up military science so that we can have access to grenades and the better ammunition um, oh, I've got a broken belt up here that I didn't repair. Well, I couldn't repair it because it doesn't exist. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, so we'll set up um, military science in the next episode. And then after that, I think we'll start to set up a mall so that we can start to build supplies. Uh, we're getting close to these cliffs. Um, it would be nice to get our hands on some cliff explosives. Which we have not researched yet, but we can add to our queue. Uh, those take explosives, empty barrels, and grenades. Um, explosives... Let's see, what does it take to make explosives? Coal, sulfur, and water. And to get sulfur, we need oil. And... Okay, there's some oil up there. I think that's our closest oil patch. Yeah. So it might be a while before we can get to the oil and process it into sulfur and all that stuff. It won't be too much longer. After military science, we'll do chemical science, which are these guys. Um, and when we do chemical science, that's what's going to that's going to require us to have oil because we're going to need sulfur and advanced circuits which take plastic and we'll need oil processing for both of those things so so we're not too far away from oil processing but it'll be probably another couple episodes before we get there so thanks again we'll see y'all next time